everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we will be talking and chatting about some new makeup releases that have been announced and sneak peeked. I took all my information from Trend Mood, meaning that I can't cover every single release that is coming out, so keep that in mind. I also don't talk about all of them on Trend Mood. I picked those that I thought were the most interesting to me. So if you want to know what's coming up in the makeup world, stay tuned. So ever since my last video, a lot came out. Also a few things that had been sneak peeked have now finally been revealed. And the first thing I wanted to talk about is actually an eyeshadow palette from Glossier. It is a refillable compact there are 10 different shades to choose from. There's one that's bronzy, more violety, green, orange, yellow. There are a bunch of different colors. Each pan comes with three different finishes, a matte metallic and a satin. You can buy a refill as well as take out the mirrors in these. I do really like the idea of it, but it bothers me so much that there is just three colors, especially when you see that the size of the actual palette it could have been a quad and I just don't know why they didn't do that. It could have added one even deeper shade or a lighter shade. I just think it's, I don't know, it's kind of weird. I understand that these are monochromatic, that some shades are similar since you are getting a palette that is dedicated to one color specifically, so I think that's fine. Um, but I think that one extra color that added a little bit more dimension to these trios would have been a good idea because the shades do look very similar and though they are different finishes i still think one extra shade would have been better i don't know it just kind of bothers me the way it looks and yeah i think these shadows cater more towards those who like very natural makeup because again with a trio like this, you won't be able to create different looks. It's always going to be the same look unless you buy different colors of these trios. So, yeah. Then we have from Glowish these blushes and also pressed powders. Do you think the blush colors are super, super pretty? Uh, especially that rosy color is very pretty. I don't know why they look like cake on the inside like the pattern of a cake when you cut open a cake. I don't know why it kind of looks like that. The powders are supposed to be smoothing and breathable luminous pressed powders. They're supposed to blur pores without settling into fine lines and come in 13 shades. They're also fragrance free and transfer proof. It does go pretty light and pretty deep. I'm not the best to judge if this is light enough or deep enough. I know that for me, the lightest shade would probably work pretty well, I'm sure. Blushes, I don't know. I think the blush two shades are very similar, so uh, I don't know if they will really show up differently on the skin. In terms of the blushes, they are vegan and they are a velvety blush with a marble formula that gives a natural fresh faced flush and has a soft focus glow. That sounds very, very appealing to be honest. Has rose oil in it, red bell pepper extract, okay. Shea butter, okay, shea butter, I wouldn't buy it for myself because I have struggled with fungal acne before. Um, and shea butter can be a trigger to fungal acne. Um, I know a lot of people only get fungal acne on the forehead, but just to be safe, I personally wouldn't buy these blushes. So they sound pretty nice and they look pretty nice, but. I wouldn't buy them to be honest. The blushes retail for $31 and the powders retail for $33. Then we have a palette that is a collaboration between Morphe and Jaclyn Hill. There have been many different collaborations between her and Morphe. This one is the Divine Neutrals palette and it comes with 12 neutral shades, 6 shimmers and 6 mattes and will retail for $18. I think for someone who really likes neutrals, you want a neutral palette that isn't, you know, filled up with one pop of color. You really want to stick to it being neutral. I think this palette is probably going to appeal to a lot of people. I wish there was maybe a little bit more of a pink hue in this palette. It's very bronzy, golden base, and there's just one light shimmer pink. So maybe one more shimmer pink that is more rosy and a little bit deeper. Um, I do think this palette is very beautiful. I think it's a good staple neutral palette. Have we seen palettes like these? Of course we have. 
I mean, if you have the first Jaclyn Hill palette, you will probably find these shades, not these shades, but very similar shades in her palette. I'm not talking about the second one that was very vibrant. I'm talking about the original Jaclyn Hill palette. I think you will find shades like these. So I don't know if you have that palette, if you necessarily need this. And I personally have never tried Morphe nor the signature Jaclyn Hill formula that supposedly is in these palettes. When I saw it, I was a little bit underwhelmed. It was kind of for me, although I like neutrals, I love these types of colors. I was kind of like, again, how many times more will we see a neutral palette from a brand? But I think it's just a safe space to go for a lot of people and brands because there will be always someone buying a neutral palette because a lot of people still are a little bit too afraid of color and for every day, depending if you have a certain work space, like you can't really go into work with like a blue smoky eye. I think it's just a safe space for people. Um, also the pricing, if the quality is great, like $18, I think is pretty good for a palette. So yeah. Then we have the Makeup Revolution Time Simpsons collaboration that I had just announced in my last video, but now we can finally see how it looks. I was expecting something pretty colorful. I don't know, from the packaging, I knew that this was not going to be something neutral and I'm not disappointed. This is exactly what I was kind of envisioning. This collection includes a mini highlighter, a mini eyeshadow palette, two actually, two mini eyeshadow palettes, three lip kits, a face palette, a big shadow palette, sponge, gel liners, there is, there's just so much, oh my gosh, it's a lot, it's a lot, um, I am pretty overwhelmed, the pricing on each piece is pretty okay, like the shadow palette, the big one, um, retails for $25, and then the other pieces range from 8 to 15 so it's pretty reasonably priced and if this is like your aesthetic and you're into these colors into the theme i mean the face palette for instance looks like a very standard -y face palette with a bronzer blush and a highlighter let me know what you think about this uh this is not my aesthetic at all but i think it is pretty cool then there is a collection from mac coming out it is the rosalia Oh my god, I don't know how to pronounce that. So, so sorry. But this collection looks very pretty. The packaging is very pretty. There are four regular lipsticks, then four retro matte liquid lip colors, nail polishes, nail lacquers, extra dimension skin finish palette that comes in different shades, like something looks kind of like a highlighter, more of a blush, and there's also an eyeshadow palette, some stickers. For the eyes um it's very neutral in color so again i think for a lot of people like a safe space to go to um i know that mac products can be a little bit more expensive so i don't know if one would really need to spend this much on a palette that looks very similar to things we have seen from anastasia i mean the eyeshadow palette um, retails for 50 dollars and that extra dimension skin finish palette retails for $60. So that is quite pricey and I'm pretty sure you could find things like these in other brands. If you like the packaging and this speaks to you, why not? Um, but yeah, for me it's a little bit like it's pretty but I don't feel particularly like pulled in by this. Then Tower 28 is coming out with a 2-in-1 mineral sunscreen foundation with an SPF of 30. It's a light, medium, buildable coverage and natural finish product that is safe for sensitive or problematic skin. It evens out redness, vegan, cruelty-free and fragrance-free and it will retail for $30. I'm a little bit confused because in the description from Trimood it says it's a tinted sunscreen foundation but then the description says it's a mineral sunscreen foundation. Is it a foundation or is it a tinted sunscreen? I'm a little confused. Like the aesthetic of it, I really like the packaging. I think it's very pretty. Um, I'm not really on the hunt for a new foundation. Also $30 for me is just too much at the moment. It sounds very, very nice, you know, with buildable coverage and a natural finish. Sounds like something everyone is always looking for. 
Also with the shades that I'm seeing on screen, there is one bottle that looks super light and one that's super deep. So since these, if it's a tinted sunscreen, they'll probably work for a lot of skin tones because it's buildable. I don't know, I'm excited to see more from this. Next up we have two more additions to the Glam Light Happy Hour collection. Um, these are inspired by cocktails and I have mentioned the Dirty Martini and the Wine Palette in my previous video. We also came out with the Chocolate Martini and the Margarita Palette. Chocolate Martini I think is perfect for those of you who like neutral, but it's not boring neutral. I really like the shade on the very right corner, that like bluish, purplish shimmer color with the browns underneath. Looks so pretty. So I think that is kind of like a neutral with a twist. I really like it and it also has a bunch of different uh, finishes as it seems. So I think it's pretty versatile, although it's kind of like a neutral palette. And the Margarita palette, although I'm like not into color at all, I think it looks so, so pretty. Like I'm amazed how beautiful it looks. It kind of, if that came out in the summer, I believe a lot of people would have gone nuts over it because it looks so fresh and radiant and it looks so fun. It looks really, really fun. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the ColourPop Barbie palette because it has pinks and blues, um, but I really like the color story. I think they did a great job on all four. If I had to buy one, or if I could buy one, I would definitely go with the chocolate martini because it's just a safe option for me. <laughs> then we have some new products from Made by Mitchell. There is a palette, liners, blush, sponge, um, makeup organizer, travel makeup organizer case, um, and also brushes, I believe. Personally, I'm not a fan when palettes have a very crazy background like this cow print almost kind of distracts me from the color i don't know i just can't really see the beauty of a palette when the background is too crazy but that's just my personal opinion um the colors are very pretty i think this palette also has actually a very nice color story especially those like peachy tones with the greens those like army greens it's very very pretty yeah overall a pretty interesting collection it's not speaking to me but maybe to some of you then we have something that I was really interested in, um, not that I wanted to buy, but I just love it when a brand comes out with a whole range of nude colors, different options for a bunch of skin tones. I'm such a fan because I can also try something that is maybe more for someone with deeper skin. I just love lines like these. I just I'm, I'm a sucker for them. This one is from Makeup by Mario and it comes in a bunch of different shades. 20 shades, $24 each, so kind of like MAC pricing. There are so many different tones. Soft peachy nude, mid-tone rose, mid-tone pink, mid-tone mauve, mid-tone peach, dirty rosy, berry mauve. There are just so many different tones that I believe that anybody will be able to find a lipstick color in this line. I just appreciate it so much that this line goes very, very light, but also very, very deep. This one is supposed to moisturize your lips um, since it softens your lips for a non-drying and ultra comforting feel. It has a blur filter technology for a soft focus appearance and it has long lasting coverage. I think it sounds amazing, sounds like everything I want, sounds like everything I like. If I had to pick a shade, it'll probably be Raza. It's like on the very top, the right color because it looks very pinky. It's mid-tone rose pink, totally up my alley, um, but yeah. I know there are a bunch of nude colors out there, a bunch of nude lipsticks out there, but I think this looks looks awesome. Then we have another MAC collection, but this one is for the holiday season. It is their holiday collection. I don't really like the packaging. I don't like that swirl whatsoever. Um, it's just absolutely nothing for me. Not interested in this at all. So this is also a pretty big collection, but again, it's nothing that I'm interested in. I don't know, MAC collections, I feel like have been getting a lot of crap because they're usually nothing special, nothing new. Um, they also don't overwhelm me. When I want to go for MAC, it's usually for staple lipstick colors. I'm pretty sure MAC lipstick colors are 
very easy to dupe at this point because a lot of brands have stepped up their game, especially in the drugstore department. Um, but if I was to go to MAC, it's just to repurchase a lipstick shade that I have, but I'm not interested in trying anything new from them, so nope. Then we have another palette from Makeup Revolution or XX Revolution, um, collaboration with Matrix. <laughs> um, it comes with two eyeshadow palettes, one is more neutral, kind of reminds me of the chocolate martini palette from Glamlight. Um, but yeah, two eyeshadow palettes, two lip sets, liquid eyeliner, pigment mascara, whole bunch of things. Very vibrant, the packaging is very green, which I think is very fitting. It looks very cool. Again, the neutral palette, very pretty. Um, I mean, we've seen that before, like, it's not the new, new, new. It's the one that looks so cool. That is like, you take the blue pill, you take the red pill. It's really cool. As I stated in my other video, I don't like it when palettes are very big and then there are so many similar shades in that palette. I'm someone who is like, just take half of it out if it's all the same and make a smaller palette. You could have with this pill kind of packaging still done a smaller palette and you wouldn't have that many similar colors, especially in the warm tone one. There are a bunch of shades that look like one another. I'm not the brand. I'm not here to the side. I'm just giving you my opinions, but yeah. Looks cool. Oh yeah, I completely forgot to mention, but in that Glam Light collection, there are also two highlighters and five liquid lipsticks, I believe. A bunch of shades from light to very deep. I completely forgot to mention those two products, but it looks very pretty. Then we have a gloss bomb collection for the holidays from Fenty Beauty. It is called the Glossy Posse Fantasy for some uh, Oh, okay, for some, okay. <laughs> it comes with Fancy Glow Fantasy, Hot Chocolate Fantasy, Champ Stamp Fantasy, and a full-size gloss balm cream in the shade Candy Milk. I really like the shades. I think they'll work on a lot of different people, um, and I think especially cool tone people will like these colors. Candy Milk looks very, very pretty. The original cream colors didn't really speak to me, um, but this looks so, so nice. I don't know for how much it'll retail, but I think it'll probably be a very good deal so if you like the gloss bombs you have some new shades I don't know how different they are I know that hot chocolate fantasy looks a lot more like it has a purple tone than hot chocolate also Fenty Glow fantasy looks a lot more red toned than Fenty Glow but yeah I love this I always like that they bring out these kits in the holiday season because it is just always such a good deal. So if you like these or you wanted to try these, I think it's a good option. Then we have from Lunar Beauty, the Moon Spell Volume 2 collection. It comes with an eyeshadow palette, liquid lipsticks, lip gloss, and lip trio that kind of like has everything. So you can kind of get a bundle. The palette is very pretty. Again, some shades are similar, but um, when they're in different finishes, I can understand that. Color story is not for me because I'm not into purples that much, but it's very pretty and I know a lot of people like their purples and berry tones. I think it's a very beautiful like fall time palette. Um, the lip products look very pretty as well, very fitting with the palette and the outside of the palette is just so cool. It really looks so so pretty so yeah, I also wanted to mention this. Then, there is a new eyeshadow palette from By Terry and it is the VIP Expert palette Bonjour Paris. Um, it is your standard neutral palette. I love palettes like these. Nine pans, neutral, love it. It's just so easy to throw into your makeup bag and take, let's say if you're going out for a weekend, I think Something like this is amazing. I know that this is probably for a lot of people too boring since a lot of people have been like, oh, it's always neutral, neutral, neutral. And I mean, with the Morphing Jaclyn palette, I also said that. But I said that with the Jaclyn palette because we have seen something like that from her before. Probably by Terry as well. I don't know anything about by Terry, but it's more like a brand has done something over and over again and they come out with something so similar again, that's when I think people are bothered. It's different when a brand has brought out like five vibrant toned palettes and then they come out with a neutral. I think that is something different. So just wanted to clarify that. But again, I don't know what By Terry has had in the past, but it looks very pretty. 
it is something that I would probably get a lot of views out of and I think it's perfect for the everyday consumer but I don't know for how much okay for the everyday consumer for $56 I knew by Terry was expensive but Colourpop has nine pen palettes that are very good and don't cost half the price of this. Then we have another Too Faced palette. Look, I'm gonna put the other palette I talked about in my last video up as well so you can see how similar they look. I can absolutely understand why Too Faced is getting so much crap for them always coming out with the same things or things that are very similar. The color story looks almost the same. It's just the color arrangement that is different. But like I showed these two to my boyfriend because he just out of curiosity he was like is Too Faced still like relevant in the makeup industry and makeup community and stuff and I kind of like explained like kind of got a lot of crap because they do some things that are so similar and they either go the very cute route or the very explicit route and I showed him these two palettes and he was like isn't that the same just differently arranged and I kind of felt the same I just don't get it. The shades are very similar. You have your very light color, something more deep and berry, and that almost greenish color. I do have to say this one appeals more to me than the other one. You probably do, you most definitely don't need both. It looks so freaking similar. I, I don't know what's going on. And also $27 for such a small palette is nuts to me. No. <laughs> then we have from Fenty Skin a hand mask that is coming out. It is supposed to moisturize and rescue your dry hands, stressed hands overnight because it is loaded with 40% of glycerin, 5% of panthenol and other plant extracts. Supposed to be deeply moisturizing, revitalizing and nourishing for the hands. It'll retail for $22. Think it's a perfect time to bring out something like this. Our hands will be dry AF, especially with us having to clean our hands, wash our hands even more than ever because of COVID. And the bottle looks very pretty and yeah. From 4th Ray Beauty, a gentle exfoliator. It's a pumpkin face polish for smooth hands healthy skin. I love the aesthetics of this packaging. Like look at that outside packaging. The little pumpkins. Oh my god, that's so cute. This one gently exfoliates because it's formulated with super fine sugar. I've heard that sugar, anything that is edible is not good for the skin because it'll never be able to be as fine as to not damage our skin. But I, I'm no doctor. I'm I I'm just saying what I've heard. So I don't know. It says it's a super fine sugar to polish skin for a softer and smoother complexion. Um, it's enriched with pumpkin enzymes, gets rid of dead skin cells. The thing for me is like with cleansers, I also feel like with exfoliators, these are products that don't really stay on your skin for a very long time because you're only washing your face with it or exfoliating your skin with it. So I always would prefer to, I mean, this isn't expensive, but let's say this was expensive. I personally would have preferred to invest my money into a good serum, into a good essence, but with cleansers and stuff, they do such a short like job that I sometimes wouldn't really buy something expensive, but this is very affordable. I'm not gonna try it out, but it's super, super cute. And I wonder how it smells. And lastly, as I'm recording this, we have from Kylie Skin a lip oil. It is a watermelon, watermelon? watermelon lip oil. It is a non-sticky formula that deeply hydrates, comforts, and leaves a slight pink tint to the lips with a watermelon. What? What? What the heck is going on with my mouth? Watermelon flavor. <laughs> it has different oils, vitamin E. I personally cannot stand watermelon scented anything. And no, I know a lot of people love watermelon everything. I personally, no, I hate it with a passion. I just can't. I like watermelon as a fruit to eat, but not in my like beauty products. I just hate it. It leaves a light pink tint. I have a lip gloss, it's not a lip oil. I have a lip gloss from Catrice and there are also some lip oils from Catrice that cost you probably a lot less and they can also tint your lips. Like the gloss I have tints your lips a very beautiful, nice rosy pink color. Um, I don't know, I mean, if you like Kylie skin, go for it. But I've heard that the Sigma lip oils are amazing as well as a lip oil from Ulta Beauty, so 
you're looking for something different, maybe try those. But if you want to splurge, there you go. So these are all the products I wanted to talk about as of now that I'm seeing what is coming out. It's very hard to keep track of all of them. So I did not include everything and the time between actually filming, editing and posting the products coming out and I'll definitely mention them in my next one. I try to film these every Sunday from now on because it's like the perfect day for me to film these. Leave me in the comments down below what are some of these that you are interested in. I'm not gonna buy anything. Um, I have enough, but I just love to chat about these products because I love makeup. Although I'm very simple with my makeup, I love to hear about beauty news and makeup news. Thank you so much for watching and for stopping by. And if you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up or don't. It's completely up to you. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.